So you told CNN in the fall that Walker didn't do enough to get your respect or your vote in November. Will you be voting for him next Tuesday? I showed up to vote this morning. I was one of those folks who got in line and spent about an hour waiting. And, uh, you know, it was the most disappointing ballot I've ever stared at in my entire life uh, since I started voting. You know, I had two candidates that I just couldn't couldn't find anything that, that made sense for me to put my, my vote behind. And so I walked out of that, that ballot box uh, showing up to vote but not voting for either one of them. So you didn't vote. This is Jeff Duncan, the current Republican lieutenant governor of Georgia, revealing that he went to a polling place and ultimately opted to leave rather than vote for the Senate candidate put forward by his own party. I'm not saying that there's an enthusiasm problem when it comes to Herschel Walker, but yeah, I know, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I just want to reiterate here, this is the current lieutenant governor and a Republican. If you're Herschel Walker and you can't convince a partisan official who's right now serving as one of the leaders of that party to vote for you, that doesn't exactly bode well for the rest of those Georgians out there who likely aren't as committed to their team as a literal elected official. I should note too that as far as Duncan is concerned, this isn't the only time that he's expressed regret about Walker's presence on the ballot. You're not going to have control of the Senate, regardless of what happens in this race in Georgia, as you know. So given that, does Herschel Walker have your endorsement? Yeah, I think it's interesting to watch the statistics. AARP came out with a, a poll today uh, that the AJC ran that 5147, which is still within the margin of error, breaking towards Warnock. Uh, and I think there's, you know, a little bit surprising. It feels like the delta should be more than that. But I think it's one, Governor Kemp came out strong on Saturday in support of Herschel Walker, which obviously he, he's done well. But also Donald Trump failed in his announcement, right? It just seems like a national dud. And uh, if it would have been a success and it would have been the talk of the town, I think you would have seen uh, Herschel Walker maybe have a little bit tougher time uh, keeping it as close as it is. But another interesting s statistic, yeah. uh, 5439 is the in independence in that same poll uh, for Warnock. And I think this is a turnout game. If we can get folks to turn out, uh, and like I said, I've been critical throughout this whole process. I just felt like, uh, you know, Herschel Walker had a hard time getting my attention as a rock solid conservative yeah. uh, just because he was famous and just because Donald Trump supported him wasn't enough to get my respect or my vote. So yeah, Walker's problems have been evident for a really long time. And look, by no means am I saying that this thing is in the bag for Raphael Warnock, far from it. But I should note that when it looked like control of the Senate was in play, at least these Republicans like Jeff Duncan could hold their noses knowing that it wasn't really Herschel Walker that they were voting for, it was to win control of the Senate. But now that that's not on the table anymore and the Democrats will hold their Senate majority regardless, do you really expect these Republicans who recognize just how utterly incompetent and unqualified Herschel Walker is to stand online for hours in the cold to cast their ballot for the guy? They may, but if the Republican lieutenant governor didn't, then I think it's a safe bet to say that at least some other people are thinking the exact same way. But could Republicans seriously not see this coming? The guy has paid for more abortions than most people have children while campaigning on a completely anti-choice platform. He's threatened the lives of his own family members. He lied about how many kids he has. And at this point, I'm not sure that number will ever stop growing. And aside from all of that, when left to his own devices, these are the gems that you get from Walker. Here he is trashing young people ahead of the runoff, which is always a good idea when young people are turning out in record numbers. Herschel, how do you feel about people that want to change America from when you and I were kids? I mean, they, I mean, there's, you know, uh, we have, I guess it's 80 to 90 or 70 to 80 million people in America that were born after 1990. So these are kids who, you know, who grew up, you know, when they were 10 years of age with the, with the real beginning of the computers and the internet at home. So they don't know the world that we know pre-internet. They don't know that the bullying was not really, we may have been bullied when we were kids, you know, in a class or teased and things like that, but not, not the type of culture that these kids have with the internet today. What do you say to those kids and those young people that are voting? Well, first of all, they don't know that the grass is not green on the other side, that they think they're somewhere better. And if they know another place is better than the United States of America, my thing is, why don't you go there or tell me, let me know who that is, because I can tell them right now that's not. I think our biggest problem is we've not shown our kids that most of the people today hadn't earned the right to change America. And what I mean by that, there are people that have died or not given their life up. There are people that have given their life up for this flag. They've given their life up that, for this national anthem. They've given their, their life up for our freedom and these liberties that we have in this country today. And we're taking it for, for, for granted. Well, I don't want that to happen. And I'm saying, and I'm not being tough. I'm saying, if you know a place better, you go there, but you lose your citizenship here in the United States of America. 
And then when you come back, you got to come back legally like we should be defending the border. Here he is explaining that the reason he's running for office is to be like vampires, I think. Just watch. I'm going to tell you to keep the faith. Oh, you ever watch a stupid movie late at night hoping it's going to get better, don't get better, but you keep watching it anyway? Because the other night, the other night I was watching this movie, I was watching this movie called Fright Night, Freak Night, or some type of night, but it was about vampires. I don't know if you know vampires and cool people, are they not? But I'm going to tell you something that I found out. A werewolf can kill a vampire. Did you know that? I never knew that, so I didn't want to be a vampire anymore. I wanted to be a werewolf. But then anyway, as I'm watching this movie, and then you can tell how stupid it is because it's one in the morning. So I'm watching my TV. Are these kids watching their TV or a vampire kill on their TV? So you know it's kind of stupid, but I'm still watching, though. As I'm watching this show, what was funny, these kids had a vampire in their attic at their house. So they were watching their TV. Now, I'm watching my TV. Are they watching their TV? Or they see the vampire killer on their TV? So they win this contest to bring this actor. Now, y'all got to stay with me. Bring this actor who's a vampire killer from their TV to get rid of this real-life vampire in their attic. So as this actor comes to their home, he got all the right stuff. He got all the right stuff because you know, got to have a state and got to have a thing to, to kill him in the heart. And he got a necklace of garlic because that worked. I don't know what it does, but it worked. You got to have a cross because it burned. I know that worked. And then all of a sudden, this is what was so funny about it. As they're walking through the house, this, 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 this guy has got the holy water. He's blessing the house, this actor. Now he's all fake. He's blessing the house with his holy water. They walked upstairs and this vampire looking real good in this black suit. Whoa, that sounds like Senator Warnock, doesn't it? Looking all good in this black suit. Floated from the ceiling. He floated from the ceiling looking good and cool. And I'm thinking, whoa, they better get out of that house. If somebody float from your ceiling, get out of that house. That's, that's not your house. But as he floated from the ceiling, the kid jumped behind that hero. As they jumped behind that hero, the guy jumped in front of him with this holy water, threw it on the vampire's forehead. He covered his eyes. And he took his hand away. He started laughing. And he said, that don't work. He took the cross, he put it on the vampire's forehead. And the vampire didn't even do anything. He said, that don't work. And that's the way it is in our life. It doesn't even work unless you got faith. It is time for us to have faith. We got to have faith in our fellow brother. We got to have faith in this country. We got to have faith in, this, in the elected officials. And right now, that's the reason I'm here. Here he is suggesting that his race is for control of the Senate, which um, it's not. It is very, very important. This election here, is about, uh, you know, about controlling the Senate in the sense that, you know, we're not going to let them take the Senate away. Right now, we can have uh, everyone have the different committees. Now the committee can be even, whereas if if uh, the Republican lose that Senate seat, then the uh, Democrat got total control. Right now, we got a chance to make all the committees even, that, it, that we can still do some correction on it, and, and that's what I'm going to fight for. Right now, this election is more important than any election I think we ever had in history. So it's not about Herschel Walker. It's about the people of Georgia. So that's the reason I'm getting out there to keep people out there to the polls. Uh, let's be clear. Walker's election to the Senate wouldn't mean both sides have equal control. It would just eliminate the extra step of having another vote to get tied votes out of committees. It would help eliminate a Republican stall tactic. But either way, Democrats have control. But I'm sure Herschel Walker is very familiar with the nuances of how the Senate works. I mean, he's probably very familiar with the nuances of how the Senate works. He may or may not even know what the Senate does. So look, while it's beyond clear that Herschel Walker is uniquely unqualified for this seat, the last thing we should assume is that Warnock's already locked this thing down. Georgia is a purple state. It's a state that just reelected a Republican governor in Brian Kemp. And it's a state where nearly two million people just came out last month to cast ballots for a guy who may very well believe that he is running to become a vampire. That means that regardless of Walker's gaffes and stumbles and scandals, if you live in Georgia, vote like this is the only race that matters. Because right now, at this current moment, that is exactly the case. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.